Hey seventh graders, today's lesson is 3.3 populations and really our main focus today is just one learning target. I can predict the indirect effects of different populations not directly connected in a food web. So that moves us on to our very first activity which is going to be your guys' notes for today. This is the last thing you guys are going to add for this unit as we're kind of starting to wrap up this unit. So open your OneNote, go to your Populations and Resources section and your Key Concepts page and I want you guys to copy and paste Key Concept 11 into your OneNote. So Key Concept 11 explains that the size of a population can be affected by any population that is connected in a food web even if they are not directly connected. So that's pretty much the same thing we just read in our, in our learning target for today. So to explain this a little better, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to our warm up. So if you guys take a look at this food web up here, which we've looked at several times now, you guys see that there's a lot of organisms in this food web, and really there's not a whole lot of direct connection. So if we're talking about the algae and the orca, they're not directly connected. There's zooplankton that happens in between them, moon jelly that's eaten for food in between them, sea turtles, so on and so forth. So like for instance, the algae and the zooplankton, they're directly connected because the zooplankton eat the algae, but the orca does not eat the algae. Okay, so they are not directly connected. That doesn't mean, however, though, that if we change the algae population, it's not gonna affect the orca population. So that's really what we're focusing on right now is if we are looking to increase the orca population, what could we do to the algae? What could we do to the zooplankton? What could we do to the walleye pollock? Okay, they could all have a change that affects the orca, even though they're not directly connected. Um, so that's what your focus is gonna be for today. All right, so with that being said, we're in activity to the warm up, And you guys are gonna examine this a little bit more if you need. And then you're gonna answer this question. You're gonna need to use the draw tool to do so. So you've already discussed how the zooplankton and sea turtle populations might have caused the size of the moon jelly population to increase. We did that in our last lesson. So which other populations do you think could have caused the size of the moon jelly population to increase? Okay, you may choose more than one. So use your draw tool and you guys are gonna ha uh, highlight all the ones that you guys think you could change to increase the size of our moon jelly population. Okay, so again, you're looking to increase your moon jelly. So what could you change to do that? Okay, um, as always, when you guys use the draw tool, remember to go back to your cursor. Then you guys will click right here and I want you guys to type and explain your thinking. Just as a reminder, anytime you guys see the question mark, there's something you guys have to do on that page. It might be more than one thing. So make sure you guys look at the whole slide carefully and make sure that you guys have answered everything that there is to answer. All right, moving on, next activity is our simulation. You guys have two missions um, that you're gonna accomplish today and it all has to do with that indirect effect of if we change one population, what other indirect effects might it have? Okay, so first and foremost, you guys can go ahead, right click, open up your sim link. Should look a little something like this. Okay, let me go ahead and restart this one here. All right, and then you guys are gonna be using the uh, six population, one for this one, and I'll show you guys why here in a second. So your mission today is to look at indirect effects, and again, you're gonna have two little missions to accomplish. Populations that are not directly connected on a food web can still affect one another. Complete each mission and demonstrate how that is possible. Okay, so mission one, find a way to increase, so this is mission one, find a way to increase the size of the claw cat population without changing the size of the scale beak population. So you guys have a little prediction to make in this box and you'll notice that scale beaks are directly connected. Um, so we don't wanna change them, we're looking at indirect effects. So your guys' options to change for this first mission are gonna be your green leaf, your wee bug, or your fur bill. And the three or the two options you have for those three populations is either to increase them or de decrease them. So choose the population you wanna work with and figure out whether you guys are gonna wanna increase or decrease that population and make that prediction down here. So what are you gonna increase or decrease? And what population are you gonna in increase or decrease to cause the claw cat population size to increase? Okay, so we're trying to increase the claw cats. So let's just go ahead and take a look at what that looks like in the sim. Am I using an iPad? No. Okay, and you guys again will choose the six population mode right here when it loads. Of course, it's gonna take forever now. 
And the reason you guys are going to use that six population is if you guys are trying to change the clock out, you guys will notice that the clock out is not available in either of the three population modes. So that's why we want to be in our six population. And you guys can go ahead and look at how your food web connects all these. So you guys are going to be looking at either changing your green leaves, your fur bills, or excuse me, your wee bugs or your fur bills. And to cause the change in our claw cats right here to increase. So notice you're not allowed to do the scale beaks again. The scale beaks are directly connected to them as the claw cats eat the scale beaks. So you can't change those. All right, so we want to increase our claw cats. We want that number to grow. So how can you change the green leaves? The wee bills or the, or yeah, the wee bugs or the fur bills, okay? All right, so then here's how you guys will actually test. So once you've kind of made your prediction and figured out how you want to change what population, you guys will start the sim. You will let it run for 20 time units. That's really similar to you guys. You guys have done this before. And then make the change that you guys selected above. Remember, making a bigger change will cause a bigger effect. You guys want to know for sure that you've increased your claw cat or your, yeah, your claw cat population. So really, whatever you choose to do, whether it's decrease the wee bugs or increase the fur bills or whatever your case is, you guys want to do it big. So max it out or take it down as low as it can go, and then you'll lock that population in place. And then, as opposed to the last time you guys did this, you're going to let it run for about 200 time units. Obviously, that takes a while. I mean, just sitting here talking to you guys hasn't been 200. So remember, you guys can bump up the speed of this and it'll go a lot faster. Not as fast as you would like it to go, but still a lot faster. Then once you guys hit 200, you guys can go ahead, hit pause, hit analyze, and then you guys can click and drag to kind of go back before the changes you made and after the changes you made to observe some data. Okay, and then once you're done with that, answer this question. Obviously, first and foremost, if you guys don't increase your clock out population, you probably want to go back and revamp, okay? Go back to slide four, erase whatever you guys put here, Pick a new thing to test if that didn't work, and then move on, okay? Uh, and then you guys can answer this question. Describe the change that you made that led to the increase in the size of the claw cat population. Explain why the change led to an increase in the claw cat population size. So this is the big thing that I want you guys to talk about here. This explanation can get, I mean, you guys should put something into that. If we look back at our warm up, and I'm asking you guys to increase the orca, by changing maybe the walleye pollock. You guys need to explain how changing the walleye pollock affects the zooplankton, which affects the moon jellies, and how it affects the sea turtles, and how that's going to affect the orca. Okay, so make sure you guys put a little effort into that explanation because you really should be talking about all those populations that connect those two indirect populations. Okay, moving on to sim mission two, very similar to what you guys just did, except in sim mission two, you're gonna be decreasing the size of the green leaf population without changing the size of the wee bug population. Remember, your wee bugs are directly connected, and we're wanting to look at indirect effects here. So you can't tweak the wee bug population for this one. We've already done that. Okay, so again, you guys are going to be looking at either sting wings, fur bills, or scale beaks, and you're either going to increase or decrease them. So make your prediction, and then you guys can move on and test it same way you guys tested on submission one. And again, answer this question in its entirety. Explain why the change led to an increase, or excuse me, a decrease in the green leaf population size. So again, you're trying to lower your green leaves. So again, you guys need to talk about all those populations in between the green leaves and whatever you guys chose to change and how they affect each other. All right, moving on, you have three little writing prompts here that you guys are going to answer. Same little food web as your warm-up. Prompt, how could a change to the size of the algae, notice your algae is highlighted, how could the change to the size of the algae population cause an increase in the size of the moon jelly population? So you guys would be trying to increase the moon jelly population. So be sure to discuss births and deaths in your answer. So I'm going to give you guys just a little hint, or well, well, a lot of help as to how you guys could answer this. So if we were to increase our algae population, we would have more food available or more resource population, if you guys really want to get technical, available for our zooplankton. And the more food they have to eat, the more they can reproduce. So therefore they would have more births and deaths, which would increase their population. And again, because they are a resource population to our consumer population of moon jellies, okay, the moon jellies would have more to eat and then they would be able to have more births and deaths. 
and they would increase as well. So notice how I talked about the zooplankton, you know, how changing the algae would affect the zooplankton, and then how that change the zooplankton affects the moon jelly population. So you guys are gonna answer that here using your own words, but I basically just gave you guys the answer. You're going to increase your algae, uh, which will increase your zooplankton, which will increase your moon jelly because they're all consumer and resource populations. So the more resource population you have, um, the more bursts you can have, and that equals more bursts and deaths. Okay, so make sure you guys answer that in its entirety, and then you guys will do the next two prompts by yourself. So you guys can see the two population I hired. So what change to our walleye pollock would you guys need to make to increase the size of the moon jelly population? That one's a little bit more technical because now we're looking at competing. This is really what we focused on last unit, or excuse me, last lesson. And then finally, we're looking at orca and moon jelly. So what change can we make to the orca? So now we're kind of flipping to the other, like the consumer side of our food web. So you're going to see some different changes there. So I really want you guys to think this through. So how could changing the orca population increase our moon jellies? Answer down here. All right, finally, last little activity, which is really going to be a great segue into our next lesson that we do today on symbiosis. It's called the ant and the acacia tree. So you guys are going to right click, open this link, and it should take you into the Amplify library. You guys can see we have some little ants here on what we can assume to be an acacia tree. So you guys are going to read that. Remember, Amplify will read to you guys if you click the speaker and then hit play. The ant and the Okay, and then you guys can answer these three questions. The ant and the acacia have a mutualistic relationship. What does this mean? What does the ant get from the bullhorn acacia tree? And what do the bullhorn acacia trees get from the acacia ants? So answer those questions. So what do they get from each other, basically? Finally, complete your wrap-up. Do you have any questions? Circle yes or no. If you guys have a question, type it below. Obviously, if it's something that's preventing you from finishing this assignment, please let me know so I can help you out right away. And then finally, how do you feel you did on this assignment? Give me a four, three, two, one. You guys are all done. That's a wrap, a seaweed wrap. Get it? Okay, I'm an idiot. All right, have a great day. I'll talk to you guys soon.